Community safety is an extremely important aspect of the design and function of our communities in East Gippsland. It impacts on everything from our overall health and wellbeing to a thriving economy. Council has a role in a number of ways, one of these being the provision of the public CCTV system. It is often said that CCTV is not the panacea of public safety. It's an effective tool, but it's just one aspect that contributes. There are a few ways that a well-designed CCTV system can support public safety. It assists in a quick response, it provides evidence for prosecution, it acts as a deterrent and can provide the community with confidence that an area is safe. The East Gippsland public CCTV system currently includes 26 cameras across Bansdale and Lakes entrance CBDs. You can see here that cameras in Bansdale are concentrated in Nicholson Street, there's a couple at the Visitor Information Centre, several in the Main Street Gardens, as well as at the Police Station and Skate Park. There's a workstation in the Bensdale Police Station where all footage can be viewed and recorded. This includes the footage from both Bensdale and Lakes Entrance. This has meant that Lakes Entrance Police have needed to contact Bensdale to view and access footage. We're really pleased though to have just completed a project to install a workstation at Lakes Entrance Police Station, allowing direct access for Lakes Police. Lakes Entrance cameras are around Barks Avenue, Mechanic Street, Meyer Street, the Esplanade and Grey Street car park. Now we get regular requests for new camera locations. Up until recently, the system was limited by the server size. There was no space for new cameras. But not only that, with the technology of cameras increasing, so higher quality footage, every time a camera, camera was replaced, it required more space, so our capacity was actually declining. This server has now been replaced, allowing these higher quality cameras and more of them. This doesn't mean we're seeking a list of new camera locations, the locations are heavily guided by crime data and Victoria Police. It's also worth noting that there are other limitations. Connectivity and line of sight are essential, as well as access to infrastructure and power. We're also very conscious of the purpose of the system. We've received requests for cameras for a wide range of incidents, from public urination to stealing bird eggs. While not dismissing these incidents, priority is given to known hotspots and areas where the largest impact can be made. The other limiting factor is budget. There's been ongoing council investment in the public CCTV system, but aside from initial equipment and planning costs, there are ongoing maintenance and repair costs, as well as replacing outdated equipment. Council has sought funding on several occasions, sometimes successful, so the Grey Street car park in Lakes Entrance was funded. However, there seems to be a lot less funding available in recent years, which has been more difficult to obtain. Funding is also not available for ongoing operational costs. In the absence of grant funding, Council has allocated approximately 440000 over the next two years. It needs to be noted though that this is to cover replacement of cameras and equipment as well as new cameras. While they're replacements, it's worth noting that replacement cameras do improve the system. These are old photos but show the same location during the day and at night. Clearly the vision at night has some limitations. New cameras will have greater ability to operate in low light improved pan and tilt functions that can be operated from the workstation, improved zoom functions and better picture quality. We have had reports of cameras not working or dropping in and out. Updated cameras will assist with this. There are also other factors that impact on the connectivity, such as trees, weather and interference. We're working to improve these. You may have noticed recent inspections and tree work to improve visibility and connectivity in some locations. We're also looking at improving lighting in certain areas. Back when CCTV was gaining traction, there was a lot of concern about community privacy. These concerns are still valid and no less important. However, there seems to have been a shift towards more acceptance and in some cases requests for more surveillance. That said, the public CCTV system operates in a very strong governance model. As mentioned, while the system is owned and funded by council, footage is housed and stored at the police station and council is not able to view this. This is all set out within an MOU between Victoria Police and council. In addition, the system is managed in accordance with a number of policies, standards and protocols. These can be accessed on Council's website. A key part of the governance structure is a steering committee who oversee the operations. There is an annual meeting, although we've increased this to every six months at the moment, given there's a lot happening in this space. The committee includes Council, Victoria Police, the Chamber of Commerce, Leader from Lakes Entrance and our service contractors who maintain the system. There have been a number of success stories shared indicating that the system is having an impact. While not able to go into detail, there are reports of offenders being identified. 
an incident where it was noticed that a camera had panned towards an incident, which made those around the incident more confident that there was surveillance. One other success story, while it involves other initiatives as well, was the redevelopment of the Bairnsdale Skate Park. For those who remember the old skate park, there was no CCTV, there were the old ramps that you could hide in, and no lighting. We understood that this was a hot spot for incidents. With the upgraded park, the hiding spots were removed, and there is strong passive surveillance from the highway and the playground. Security lighting and CCTV have also been installed, and reports are that incidents at the skate park have dropped off significantly. The added benefit is this is providing a positive and healthy diversionary activity for young people. While there's been a lot of progress and success, we know there's always room for improvement. Council has conducted a survey about the system and one of the key areas identified is that many people simply don't know that the system is in place. There's signage at each location, however it is clear that more needs to be done to promote the system to both provide assurance to the broader community and also in aid in its effectiveness as a deterrent. Expansion of the system is already underway and we look forward to those improvements. As with all initiatives though, there's always more that can be done. Council and the Steering Committee will continue to look at potential improvements and possible funding sources. So what can you do to assist? As mentioned, the CCTV system is quite closely governed, so there isn't a lot of opportunity for partnership. However, there are some minor things that you can do to assist. Private CCTV systems are increasingly useful to allow footage to tell a better story, and being aware of lighting and other barriers to camera footage, and if possible, taking steps to improve these. Finally, just to reiterate, the public CCTV system is an effective tool, but it is only one part of addressing community safety.